Welcome to Accelerate OC, the only show focused on the people leading innovation in Orange County. Join our host, Carrie Ransom, in his conversations with the trendsetters, entrepreneurs, investors, and leaders here, because it's time to Accelerate OC. Good morning. Welcome to Accelerate OC. I'm Carrie Ransom, and thanks always to our engineer, Paul, for making me and my guests sound so good. Today's episode is sponsored by my friend Scott Fox over at the Orange County Startup Council. It is the best resource we have here in Orange County for all things startup. You can find great OC companies, partners, events to attend, and even great talent. You can go to ocstartups.org to learn more. I am really excited to have my new friend, Andy Fadalahi, here today, and we met about six months ago, and I've had some really fun conversations uh, over the last several months, and uh, finally persuaded him to come on and, and talk about uh, a couple things that uh, he's been here for a long time. I think he moved here when he was about four, and uh, so he is, you know, largely born and raised in Orange County, and has seen a lot uh, over that time. I think you know, twenty years now since he's just over, uh, yeah. just over. <laughs> <laughs> slightly over twenty. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Andy uh, was well well known here for the founder of a company called Incipio, which I would guess many of you who are listening to this on your phones probably have an Incipio case around your phone. And so we'll talk about that journey and experience today. He's still chairman of that company, but they sold uh, stake in that to private equity a few years ago. And then most recently, he's founded a company called the Canvas Company that he's running. And so I want to talk also about that. But before we get to hear from him and, and all of his great experiences, and I will tell you as a preview, he is a good storyteller. So we will no doubt have some good wow. stories. You're really to talk set, about. you're setting me up, aren't you? <laughs> uh, let, let me tell you a little bit uh, more about him. So as I said, he founded and is currently running a company called the Canvas Company, which is a cannabis technology company. And so um, he's had some interesting, uh, you know, interesting experiences thus far in that. And I think we'll talk a little bit about that today, but. Also, you know, just a huge success with Incipio. And um, just before he was sharing uh, some great stories with uh, his competitor in that space, Otterbox, which many of you also know. And so, um, you know, we'll talk some about that and how, you know, he just has what's clearly great respect for a uh, competitor. And I think that's a great lesson for many entrepreneurs to learn, which is that you can uh, actually build better companies when you have good, good competitors uh, in your space. So... As I said, he's a native, he's been around here for a long time, and uh, I think he's got a lot to share about the business climate of Orange County, what's happened in this last generation, and uh, maybe even some preview of what we think is probably ahead in the next. So, Andy, thanks for joining, and uh, we got a lot to chat. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, let's get to the starting line. I guess as a starting point... Why don't you share at least what your current company is sure. doing and uh, with sure. Canvas Company and you know how you decided to, to jump into this uh, space? Um, th okay, uh, you know it's it's interesting because um, when I exited in Scipio, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I th I thought I was going to retire for a little bit and mm -hmm. and just kind of take time and and uh, spend time with the family. I've got three young children, uh, ten, seven, and three. Yeah, you're so a little got, bit behind me. Yeah, yeah, I've got a I've got a three year old at home. And so, um, so I thought I was going to do that. And, and, uh, one day is, I think, you know, a lot of folks in Orange County that have sort of, you know, moved on and, and, um, started their, you know, sort of second chapter mm -hmm. of, you know, in investing and looking at opportunities and, and, you know, mentoring and advising and all sure. the things that yep. I think, you know, you might be doing. Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> it's funny cause, uh, I had lunch with some buddies and then, uh, and then I had another lunch with some buddies and, uh, I went home and uh, I was like two thirty, three o'clock in the afternoon. And my wife said, uh, you know, what'd you do today? I said, well, I had lunch with some two friends. lunches, yeah. I had two lunches and four <laughs> cocktails. And it was like two 30. I'm like, what are you going to do? She goes, well, I got to go pick up the kids and I've got to go take them to swim and I've got tutoring and mm -hmm. I got this and that. And I go, well, what am I going to do? She's like, you know, I don't know. You got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And I, and she's, she looks at me, she goes, you know, maybe, maybe you should go back to work. And so I, uh, <laughs> So, so, I, so I went back to work. You know, it was, it was I, I was, uh, I was retired for like three and a half weeks. Yeah. When, when it's in your blood, I yeah. mean, there's no, I, I remember before I moved out to California, this was 2002 and yeah. I was in a software company. It was going nowhere. And I said, you know, I gotta, I gotta do something different. So yeah. I left 
And uh, first day, I did the same thing and even took half the day and played tennis half the day. Yeah. And the second day, I did every errand I could possibly come up with. And the third day, I, at the end of the second day, I called my father-in-law and I said, hey, I'm, he, he's in private equity. I said, I'm coming in tomorrow. Yeah. Find me some work to do. I'll, I'll work for free. I just need something you to keep something me stimulated, to do, yeah. right? And yeah. I knew I was moving. And so I said, find me something to do. So I made it two days. So That's, that's, that's pretty that's good. That's about two, the two extent, of my, that's about <laughs> the extent of, of all the things I've ever done. It's like the longest yeah. I've ever gone. So I totally uh, relate. Yeah, it's it's just one of those things you, uh, you know, you, you've, you've got the best intentions. I mean, it's so funny. I, I, I booked some doctor's appointments and, sure. you know, got, yeah, got a physical. Exactly. And, you know, like, what, do you, my, you know, what am I going to do now? Yeah. You know, I had a really clean car. <laughs> <laughs> Car's very dirty yes. again. <laughs> um, so yeah, and uh, you know, so I, I started looking around and thinking about things that I that I thought would be interesting, and um, you know, I think I think part of the you know the evaluation process that you go through post mm -hmm. right whatever that post is, um, and I think a lot of the folks are probably listening to this and they're thinking about well, post what mm -hmm. you know you're you're all going to have a post career sure. you know mo moment, um, and I think you know being reflective and being you know sort of having that moment where you think about what you're good at, mm -hmm. what you enjoy doing, yes. um, where, where you can really be valuable. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think that's the, that's an important moment. Right. And, you know, I, I just kind of looked at what I was good at doing and, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at scaling businesses. You know, the mobile phone business was mm -hmm. one of those things where, you know, it was hundred percent growth year over year over mm -hmm. year. Um, you know, grew that business, you know, from $500 that I borrowed from my parents, to you know, four hundred million dollars in, yeah. in a period of time that it was That's, really fast growth. That is amazing. Yeah, um, and we have you know four hundred something employees, ten offices globally. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was just a it was a big big beast yes. of a business, um, and that that happened pretty quickly. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm pretty good at scaling businesses. You know, this this sector, the cannabis industry, is high growth. Yeah, still very much unknown. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of changes, regulatory changes. There are changes in the business from a, you know, brand product and, and how it goes to retail perspective, um, which really reminded me a little bit of, of the early days in the phone business sure. where, you know, we were sort of transitioning from s regular flip phones. I mean, I was in that business from before phones were phones, basically mm -hmm. Palm Pilot cases. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, the three of us in this room sure. might know what that yes. is. Maybe some of I had room. one. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I had one even with connectivity with oh, the antenna. Oh, that was, oh yeah. Well, we, that was, we had an enterprise software that we built that sat on top of it. I, didn't, I never got anybody to buy it, but, but I had a great demo. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so you know, went from the flip phone to smartish, smartish phones to Blackberries mm -hmm. to um, to the iPhone. A smart, you know, real, real um, what we consider to be a smartphone today mm -hmm. that does everything. Yeah. Um, and I saw all those changes and I was like, well, I'm pretty good at that. And this feels like that yes. where there are going to be changes and you've got to respond to those changes. And, um, so I went to a trade show. I kind of wrote the basic blueprint of what I wanted this business to be. Went to a trade show and earlier we were talking about tables, mm -hmm. right? And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. And, uh, I went to this trade show and I saw these tables of people selling product, right? People selling, mm -hmm. you know, uh, solutions, some software solutions, you know, POS solutions, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. saw tables of people selling fertilizer for growers and saw tables of people selling vape pens and, um, you know, jars and all kinds of things. And I was like, this reminds me of the old days yeah. in the phone business yep. where it was that transition from, you know, leather f flip phone cases mm -hmm. to injection molded plastics. And so I started looking at vape pens. The reason I started looking at those is because I was, I was really intrigued in the way they were, they were being manufactured and they st they're still being manufactured this way today as we sit here today. And the reality is, is, is those products are, um, are not made in a, in a, um, highly manufacturable way. Mm. Right. And so, you know, part of scaling a business and, and seeing a transition from leather mm -hmm. flip phone cases to injection molded, I believe you had your case out, you had an OtterBox case. Um, great product, by the way. Big fan. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit we'll about that. We'll talk a little that, about yeah. them. They're great. Um, transitioning from that, you know, sort of handmade product to a manufactured product mm -hmm. in, you know, injection molded and, and you know, highly manufacturable. Um, you know, I looked at the vape pens and I was like, well, this is, this is opportunity. Mm -hmm. Just because they're still so, you know, sort of antiquated in their process and how they make things. I mean, these are, you know, CNC'd 
pieces of brass mm -hmm. that are chrome plated that are hand wrapped and put in glass mm -hmm. and it's you know it's sketchy yeah i mean i think we've heard about all the news in the vape sure. business i mean these you know it's very sketchy um and i was like well i can improve this and i and i and i remember i sat there um this is about two weeks after the show i sat with one of the um one of the factory owners that uh we've gotten to know a little bit better and they're 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 a good factory and and uh, he showed me how they make these pens, these vape pens, the cartridges that people vaporize product in. I mean, mm -hmm. all, all sorts of like e-cigs or um, or um, you know cannabis or CBD. I mean, it's all mm -hmm. still vaporized sure. product. And, and I I just I remember I I just watched this. I watched him wrap this thing, and it's was, was like this is how they're made. He's like, yeah, this is it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't mm -hmm. believe the the uh, the room for error, mm -hmm. the amount of manual processes involved that was involved in that and the high rate of failure because of the design mm -hmm. the engineering that went into it these are products that were adapted from um the e-cigarette space you know you know china invented e-cigarettes and they were adapted to vaporize a universal product which is propylene glycol which is really the juice the oil that's in okay. these vape pens and you know the interesting thing about that is that if it's if it's a consistent product with consistent flavoring you know you can have universal hardware mm -hmm. and that universal hardware will behave appropriately um if it the materials if it's everything's the same yeah everything's yeah. the same and um i looked at this and i said well th that's not what's going on in the cannabis space and by the way it, it's interesting i'm going to say this because i'm not mm -hmm. a user mm -hmm. I, I don't you know i don't smoke sure. or I barely drink anymore, um, except for the four cocktails I had um, that, that, day, that yeah. one day, <laughs> that one day, <laughs> and and we're gonna have lunch after this, yeah. so we might have two. Um, but um, so I'm not a user, and but I but I understood enough to know that what was being vaporized mm -hmm. was inconsistent, yeah. inconsistent because of state to state distillation process, mm -hmm. flavorings, um, and dilutants. Um, you know, a year ago, people were... And, and the oversight, right? Like, there still is oh, somewhat limited oversight of what, what is in there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there are tons of room for improvement. Yes. And I thought to myself, like, long story, by the way, I thought to myself, well, I, I know how to do this. Like, I got this, mm -hmm. right? And um, I underestimated the challenges of the space. Mm -hmm. and, and I had a good sense of what I was good at, what I was not good at. And I thought, well, look, I know how to do this stuff. Um, and so I started this business. And, um, you know, set up a little office, uh, on the water, in Newport, mm -hmm. you know, cause I wanted to enjoy where I worked every sure. day. Um, one of the first things we did, um, as an organization, we said, look, we're going to have a four day work week. Amazing. Like, like have to have mm -hmm. it. The reason I, I wanted it was because I wanted to be able to recruit really high quality talent that valued personal, mm -hmm. um, time and time with family and, and, and were able to give us as a business the sort of mix of you know people use work life balance mm -hmm. but they don't you know I mean I, I didn't. that to me is like the epitome of work hard play hard when you do four four day right because yeah like you can say that but I feel yeah. like that you really deliver it because you say look like I want you to go play hard on I, those those yeah. Other two days yeah like and, I, and I think play you know play means different things based on sort well, of how, with your family with I'm your just family saying, sure just sure like, yeah yeah I mean that's like play to me is. Anytime I'm not, <laughs> no. I'm not just totally focused on. I mean, yeah. Today's to Friday. That's right. I'm I'm hanging out with you today. Yeah. There's no way. Two years ago, on a on a any day of the week, right. I could have broken away for two or three hours. That's right. To come hang out in the middle of the day and do this, and then plan mm -hmm. our lunch, and you know, like exactly. Are we gonna have you know? Are we gonna have salmon and salty dogs, or are we gonna have you know? What are we having? That's right. You know, I'm thinking about yeah. that right now. And so, um, you know, being able to spend time with, with my kids and, and my staff, um, you know, they, they've got, they've got families and they're able to be flexible and mm -hmm. kids come to work and we're, we're not just cool with it. We love it. Awesome. Um, people bring their dogs in, you know, once in a while we've, we've done three dog days, um, probably, you know, one too many last week was pretty wild. <laughs> we had like, I think we had like, uh, seven dogs and six people in the office there's more dogs <laughs> yeah. than yeah so it was, it was a bit much um but it was you know it's it's um well and and i think we'll talk a little bit about that as we start talking yeah. about or, you know orange what, County, what we can do differently. what, what yes. we can do differently what how we how we attract um you know top talent so basically just wanted to 
do things a little bit differently than I did last time. Wanted to grind, but not grind as hard. Yep. Um, and, you know, be able to use my experience and scaling and manufacturing um, to create solutions. And, you know, the vape business was broken. Um, we'd like to think that as of two, three weeks ago, we fixed it. Mm. Um, brand new introduction to some product. This isn't mm -hmm. a plug for what we do mm -hmm. in any way. But um, we really solved some, some real problems. Um, and so now we've got this fantastic product line and people are super interested and we've got, you know, competitors that are being very kind to us. Um, we've got customers that are, you know, that are now lined up and you know, we didn't That's have awesome. customers, we didn't have yeah. customers, you know, two months ago. Now we've yeah. got customers and it, it was just, uh, it's been a fun year. It's been a hard year, but it's been mm -hmm. a fun year building a business from the ground up and I forgot what it was like. Hmm. You know, so those mm -hmm. the startup folks that mm -hmm. are listening to we this, we put it behind. It's like parenting. I mean, I always say, like, if, if I if I really was present with how I felt in those first few months of being yeah. a parent, I probably would only have one kid. Yeah. But yeah. somehow, well, you we're, forget we're how really hard good it. <laughs> at remembering the good times and putting some of the pain away yeah. because it's the same with startups. I mean, I've done ten, and it's crazy. Yeah. I go, what am I doing? Well, but I there's something about the yeah. focusing on the positive. I'm an optimist. I know that. I look for the <coughs> absolutely the experience. Absolutely, you know, it's it's funny. The optimism is so important in you know in being a, a founder entrepreneur. Um, you know, we. It's, it's, I remember the, the days, you know, when I first started um, in Scipio back, you know, back in 99. Um, and, you know, Orange County didn't have things like this. I mean, well, this didn't exist, sure. you know, but, um, but there was no startup community at all. Mm -hmm. There was no access to capital. Um, there were, there were, you know, there were, were no outlets for, for, for young entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs of any age, really, to, to, to get guidance and, mm -hmm. and, and mentorship. Um, you know, the crazy thing is it's been 20 some years since then, 20 years, well, probably exactly since 2000. Yeah. And you picked a great market at the right time, right? <laughs> the story, the, the story you know, the of cheap, that. The cheapest capital is revenue. Yeah. I mean, I was reminded of that last night in a conversation. Got it. The cheapest capital to fund your business is revenue. revenue. And when you pick a great growth market. When you have high growth. Yeah. That, that can absolutely do it. Which is why, which is why I got interested in the cannabis space to sure. begin with because of the growth. Yes. It was a high growth sector. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's evolving daily mm -hmm. and, um, there's a, there's plenty of opportunity and, you know, with revenue, you know, you can make, you can make some mistakes. Mm -hmm. Um, some folks in our space, you know, especially over the last, you know, probably a couple of months, you've, you know, you've read the reports that, you know, they've got tremendous revenue, but they've, mm -hmm. you know, the margins are weak and they've made a lot mm -hmm. of mistakes and, you know, with high, with high revenue, you, you can afford to make some mistakes. That's right. So, and so, you know, we, we made mistakes obviously in the phone business and, and uh, but we had you know tremendous growth and and that revenue was was the cheapest form of capital. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, and it was great. Um, but uh, but thinking about you know how, how the business started, I, I mean I'm sure you'll you'll relate to this is um, you know it's it's a lonely job. Mm -hmm. It's a lonely job to be a founder you know of That's anything, right. even if you have co-founders. Mm -hmm. You know you're lonely together. That's right. You know, and you know the the. It's it's interesting because you know you're you're typically the first one in, last one to leave. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in the office or working from home, you're the first one on your email, you're the last one off your email, and you know you're the, you're also the the last one to get paid. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I've I've grown to um, really value my my um, my employees, mm -hmm. the folks we work with every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I th I think of them as partners. Mm -hmm. um, they're you know mm -hmm. they're they're equity partners. And in one way or another, whether they 100%. really are or not, they are. just that mindset. Yeah, yeah. I, ideally they are, yeah, they but, are. but in, not in all businesses. But if you yeah. can treat them, I mean, I, I said this for a long time, and I, th I don't think a lot of people just orient this way is like my job as leader is to inspire these people to actively make the choice to be here yeah. and bring their best self here every yeah. day. And it's, yeah. it's to make the choice because they have choice. <clears throat> Oh, now, yeah. not all of them exercise it. We may not have a choice. That's right. right? <laughs> you, you know, yeah. you know, we're what, what, what's what's that old expression? The, uh, the 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 chicken and the pig, when it, when it as it relates to breakfast, the the chicken involved is involved in in the eggs, but but the pig is is committed to the bacon. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, yeah. I feel very much like the bacon sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Where we're all in. And yes. you know, I've, and you I've, get all the credit. I mean, the reality is, you get all the credit. You get all the blame. Like it is, you get all the blame. You get, you get all, the blame, all the credit. You get all the credit. Yep. But, but you know, yep. yeah. So, was there a point at Incipio where 
you were able to sort of separate you as human, as founder from the business? Because one of the things I've talked to a lot of people about here is that I, I see, and I don't think this is just an Orange County thing. I think this happens in a lot of um, it, you know, start founders and entrepreneurs is it, it, we, we aren't good as a community of having the conversation and saying, look, you're more than your company. But a lot of founders wrap their entire identity up in their business. And it's, I think it's really unhealthy uh, because at some point they probably need to let go, whether it's because they need to let go so it can go flourish or can, but they, they feel it's almost a binary outcome where you go, I either have this or I have nothing. And I, I, I well, got to tell you, yeah. the answer to that is I, I don't think I ever disconnected. Okay. And um, till recently. Sure. During that process, as mm -hmm. I was, you know, founder and CEO and ran the business and was 100% consumed by what it was, um, it really became my identity mm -hmm. after 20 years of doing sure. something. Look, you, you spent 20 years doctoring. You're a doctor. I mean, mm -hmm. well, you're a doctor obviously yes. before, but that's just who you are as, as an individual. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the level of training for an entrepreneur or founder is obviously quite a bit less. But after a while of that, you really identify sure. um, with with what you have built and what you what you are in that mm -hmm. brand you know I, I am really fortunate in um in both you know my wife's incredibly supportive and mm -hmm. so she was she's all she's great but she was really great um during this process and you know kind of exiting and becoming sort of something else mm -hmm. that isn't the phone case guy mm -hmm. And, and you seem, I mean, I don't know you well yet, but you seem very uh, healthy with this new one in, well, a, I love in it. a different way, right? Like you, you as a, which that's maybe, you know, you active, you have, you have the, clearly the ability now to yeah. choose how you want to be a founder of a, of a second business, but. Well, I didn't know that. Yes. That, I didn't know that I could. Yes. It, you know, it's so funny. It's like, you know, when you start your business, you don't know what you're capable of until you that's start. Right. And okay. when you leave your business, you don't know what you're capable of till you leave. Mm -hmm. And when you start a new business, you don't know really again if you're capable of doing all of that over again mm -hmm. and being able to grind because it is a grind. Yes. And there is a lot of risk and there is a lot of unknown. And and you've got that self doubt. It, it you know you got to have confidence, but you got to yeah. have the gut check. That's right. And um, you know so thank you for saying that. But you know truthfully, um, the transition was the right time. Um, we put in, you know, phenomenal CEO at, at Incipio. He's mm -hmm. excellent. He's, he's just a great guy. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're building that executive leadership team around, um, sort of the right things that the business needs now. Mm -hmm. Um, I still own a piece of the business and so mm -hmm. I care about it. Yeah. I always care about it cause you, sure. you know, as, yeah. as you do, but I think that that business is, is in a good position. It's in a good spot. Mm -hmm. And I think because it's in a good spot, it's made it easier to transition and do something else. Mm -hmm. And now I found myself in the middle of this and I really enjoy what I do. I like making things. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm making things again. Yes. Um, I love the, um, the challenge obviously, but the folks you work with, the folks you spend your days with every day in your office and, mm -hmm. and your customers and, um, and that, and you know, my vendors, my vendors have always been really, really important to me and critical in, in our success. And, um, you know, I've talked about this in the past, but you know, my vendor base is, you know, I think of them as partners. I think of them mm -hmm. as, as, you know, as important as employees. And, you know, I've made manufactured product in Southern China for 20 years and I continue to, you know, they've got some challenges the last, last couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. and hopefully, you know, hopefully that blows over soon. I can't think of a government that's better equipped to deal with, um, with an outbreak mm -hmm. the way, the way they have, I mean, they're, they're, they're really good at handling things. Um, and so I think they're going to recover from that and, uh, we're back to business as, as usual in the next few weeks. It, it's Chinese new year right now. Um, but they've been a critical part of every part of, mm -hmm. of building a business, you know, businesses now. Um, you know, but at Incipio, we owned, you know, we owned five brands and licensed 15 brands, mm. um, you know, mostly mobile phone accessories, mm -hmm. but some other verticals as well, um, luggage and, and bags and things and audio products. And so those are different, sure. um, but, but manufacturing is manufacturing. And, and, um, today I sit here and I'm just like super happy with, 
with where we are as a group and an organization and I'm kind of, you know, enjoying doing things like this and which I never would have done before. I mean, like I had a meeting and, and, a, and a something booked, you know, even Friday. Sure. So it's been really nice. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And, and, I mean, I, I'll say it again. Like, I just think that's a healthier, uh, mm -hmm. a healthier approach. I, and my other add on to that is I, what I'm really trying to, to inspire here is more entrepreneurs. You mentioned loneliness. I think <laughs> loneliness goes beyond yeah. even just being an entrepreneur. I think it, it's a pervasive part of, of, uh, the business world that we're now in and that we need to create, we talked about, you know, off the air, um, whether it's dining together or yeah. getting together and having really that, you know, returning to the civil discourse and, <clears throat> and wrestling with key challenges and issues that I feel like Orange County can be this almost a laboratory for the country because we have such diversity of, of experience and thought and, ethnic backgrounds and, and like creating this much more inclusive, yeah. like that, that's what unlocks us as humans yeah. in a really unique way, because yeah. we're not going to be continuing to just push, put widgets into, uh, together and, yeah. and do these rote routine types of jobs for much longer because of automation and all that it can do. And I look at that in a really positive way and say, like, that's going to let us be more human. Yeah. And do the things that we yeah. we only can do. Absolutely. And so, you know, trying to lean on that and saying, like, how do we, whether it's four-day work weeks yeah. or how do we create more yeah, environments of support for each other to, to wrestle with ideas and how do we as, uh, as people go, all right, like, we live in the most amazing place in the world. Like, I can't leave. But that shouldn't make me complacent. No. That should actually but, give me the confidence to go tackle huge but, issues. but the funny thing is, is we've got this amazing, amazing place to live. The most perfect weather you could imagine. Yes. I mean, today, what is it, like 75? Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Mid, yeah, yes. I mean, it's February almost, exactly. and it's the most beautiful day. And it, and it's, you know, Orange County safe. Yes. You can walk around at night. Exactly. But, you know, most of Orange County is pretty yes. safe. Um, the, the school districts are fantastic. You know, people are generally pretty nice. I've mm -hmm. been all over the world. These are yes. really great people that live yeah, here. Yeah. And... We don't go to the pub after work. Mm -hmm. You know, I had an office in the UK for many years, and, and uh, a lot of my friends are, are English. And after work, they go to the pub. They go to celebrate. Right. You know, they, they go on bad days. They, they go on good days. They go in the rain. Mm -hmm. And they grab a pint. They hang out. They talk to their friends. And then they go home to their families. Mm -hmm. You know, that culture of, I'm not, I'm not saying you've got to go drink every day after work. Sure. But, but um, that culture of, you know, breaking bread and, and yes. sharing a, you know, sharing a, a moment with a friend or a colleague or someone you don't know yet. Um, you know, we need a little bit more of that here. Yes. You know, we need, we need quite a bit more in that. I mean, where I, where I set up my shop, um, in Newport, we're on the peninsula. Yeah. That's a great spot. Well, well, to be able to do that. I mean, I, right. I grab pints at, at the helmsman. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a little brewery that just yes. opened up about six months ago, grab a pint after work, go home, have dinner with the kids, mm -hmm. um, go downstairs and have a meeting, you know, um, on the water. And I mean, it's, it's just been, it's just been an awesome place to, yeah. to, to have an office and spend your days. And not everyone can do that, right? Sure. I mean, you know, when I started the business, when I started um, in Scipio, we were, I mean, look, I, I started out of my parents' garage in Orange. Mm -hmm. and, and my biggest challenge was going to be, you know, how do I pay for the rent for my 1,100 square foot um, office space? Sure which was, you know, I believe $600, $700 a month back then. Mm -hmm. It's like, I didn't know how I was going to come up with 700 bucks a month in sure. rent. Um, and that's a big thing for an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, as an early startup, like, you know, you've got to have a place to, to work. Sure. You need to show up somewhere. And then making money is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have a place to be. Um, things like WeWork and this space, I think it made it a lot easier that's right. um, than, than it was back in the day. But still, um, so it's not for everyone. And, you know, um, you know, I've, I've had terrible, ugly, cold warehouses that I've worked in and, mm -hmm. and built the business, you know, from literally from the ground up in the warehouse. And, um, you know, my, it's funny, my, my wife um, and I, we worked together years ago and, and her job was to, to, you know, run customer service and, and process mm -hmm. orders, mm -hmm. e-com orders in the warehouse. And I remember it was just freezing. Our warehouse was super cold in the winter. And she had like all these like space heaters. Sure. And it was like a fire risk. <laughs> <laughs> and you do those things and, right. and, you know, you're trying to figure out how to get cheap shipping and cheap mm -hmm. labels. And, you know, 
Um, and uh, it's you know those are those are fun days, and yeah. and I find myself doing it again. The difference is is you know I've taken on less space than I probably would have. We're packed into a little mm -hmm. tiny space in mm -hmm. in Newport, um, and I did that for you know I did that for for my staff and myself so that um, I can recruit the best talent you know um, that I could possibly find. And, and I'll tell you, top talent that's that's the key to that's success. Right. Teams. That's teams right. got to have great teams you know it's like knowing what you're good at knowing what you're not good at right. um and hiring the folks that can really enhance where you're deficient yeah that's, you know, that's it that's, that's, that's everything huge, yeah that's I mean, everyone i mean not everyone knows that you realize it ultimately that's right yeah, yeah some I mean, I, and i show it a lot with entrepreneurs that, that we work with or i say like i've learned a lot of lessons and you can go learn them yourself yeah or i'm happy to share yeah. and save you a lot of heartache and headache and and time yeah. that you you probably you're gonna waste. They may not all kill you, but you don't have to learn them all. And yeah. that's, I think, where great uh, experience can help, but also yeah. good advisors and others. So as you think about Orange County yeah. next, um, so we're, we're getting down to time here, but I do, yeah. I definitely want to get your view on this next decade in Orange County. Like, what, what do you see? We, we've got to figure out how to create more of the right kinds of jobs here yeah. because we're we have very low unemployment now, but it's not, we're not producing. The kinds of jobs that easily allow people to thrive here and live here well, and it's, so it's getting more and more expensive yeah. right so it's, what do you see changing over the next decade that you know um, will I, help i i don't know if i see it changing mm -hmm. i'd like to see those these changes i'd like to see more businesses embrace what makes orange county great um if you think about it this is a this is a community of families mm -hmm. um this is a community of folks that want families yes um and we've got, you know, we've got amazing schools mm -hmm. and, and I think that, you know, having a, a real focus on balance, balance of what you do at work, balance mm -hmm. of what you need to do with, and we talked about this earlier, but really that balance, I think is super important Absolutely. in Orange County. Yeah. Um, we can, and I think we can lead the, the world or lead the country certainly in that well, we, point of view. There's no reason yeah. we can't. That's right. I mean, you know, folks sitting around on a Friday waiting for an email on a day like this. That's right. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you're waiting for an email That's right. because someone has an expectation that you need to be in the office today. Yeah. Like, I just won't do that anymore. Yeah. yeah, I won't do that to my staff. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it to. Yeah. You to, don't want to do it to yourself. I don't want to do it yeah. to myself. And if I'm not going to do it to myself, I, That's right. why would I? Why would I expect my employees to do it? That's called leadership. It's <laughs> good know. leadership. I hope. I hope. Yeah. You know, well, but that's just one of the things, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, ha I think having you know really great health benefits, super important. Mm -hmm. You know, have, let you know being involved in in community, whatever your community is, mm -hmm. um, schools, sports, um, professional communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're wonderful startup um, communities in Orange County. There's lots mm -hmm. of there are a lot of leadership groups, and you know, I, I find myself fortunate that I get to live here. Yes, I mean, it's the best place in the world. Yeah, I can live right. other places. That's right. You, you can live anywhere. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, probably for a lot less money. Yes, and. Um, but I love it. Yeah. I, th I think this is the best place to be, best place in the world. I'm that's so I'm so thankful to be here in, in Orange County every, every day. I, I just am so appreciative. Yeah, that's I couldn't agree more. So last thing, um, Paul's giving me the, the time Sorry, sign. Paul. So <laughs> Paul uh, Paul didn't budge enough time for us today. So we'll we'll have you back to talk talk more because this is this is just starting. Um, what's a what's a lesson you'd love to? I mean, you've shared a bunch, but, you know, is there a, sort of a lesson or a piece of advice? I mean, there's a lot of people that listen to this show that are either entrepreneurs or aspiring yeah. entrepreneurs. They're, they're sitting there in their job. They're out mm -hmm. waiting on that email and they're going, I, I, I need to go try this myself. But they, you know, what, what can you share with them about sort of what you've learned that, that maybe they could take with them to, to push them or, or encourage them? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that in three ways. Okay. I'm going to answer it in in sort of the the 25 year old version of mm -hmm. myself, which was um, work hard, mm -hmm. right? Hard work. Mm -hmm. I think work ethic. You work hard at anything, you're gonna mm -hmm. do okay. Yes. You work hard and get you know get lucky, you're gonna do great, mm -hmm. right? So I'd say work hard. Give you my um, 44 year old version. Sorry, sorry, 34 year old version, mm -hmm. 35 year old version of that, and I'd say be relentless. Mm -hmm. And I think that that attitude and you know obviously. Um, you know, Kobe just passed, and and mm -hmm. that's that's been really tough for the community. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know very significant in L.A., but he's a real big part yes. of Newport Beach and, and Orange County, and the families that were affected. I mean, it's just such a such a tragic thing, and I don't want to bring it up on the radio, but um, 
you know, I think, I think talk about an example of being relentless mm -hmm. and, and, and having that mm -hmm. work ethic. And so I think that's critical in any, anything you want to do, mm -hmm. right? Hard work and just not giving up, you know, yes. you're going to get kicked in the gut. You're going to mm -hmm. get kicked in the head, um, head and heart, you know, yes. both. And, uh, I think being relentless in that respect, I think is super important. And then I'd, I'd say now as the 45 year old version of myself, I'd probably say you've got to have a really good sense of gratitude, hmm. you know, without mm -hmm. that, that gratitude for where you are in life and what you have and, and the people around you and, and what you, you know, the experiences you've had good or bad. That's right. Um, there's, I think a sense of gratitude is absolutely critical, um, in, in really navigating that, that entrepreneur slash, mm -hmm you know, startup life. Um, you know, you got to have, I think, a mix of the three, the work ethic, being relentless, and then having a sense of gratitude for where you are, whether it's good or bad that's right. of where you are. Yeah. Um, and that's hard. To, it's hard to be grateful when, when things aren't going that's your right. way. That's right. And, or here particularly, uh, I think if you're really trying to keep score, don't and, keep or keep up, right? Don't it, keep it's score. just like you just, you just can't get there. You, you got, can't keep score. I mean, how right. do you keep score right. and keep up with? That's right. Some of the folks. That's right. That yeah. we know. That's right. You don't. You, you can't. You you yeah. just got to have gratitude. That's so right. that's that's, that's kind awesome. of my two cents. That's so. that's so powerful. Well, Andy, thank you so much for joining me today. This was super fun. Um, we are going to have part two at some point, and I, I can so. get you in here on another Friday. And uh, you know, best of luck with thank the you. new venture and. Um, congrats on all the, the great success that you, you had and thanks for sharing Thank your you. wisdom and uh, you're definitely doing your part to accelerate OC. I appreciate it. Thank you. You've just listened to Accelerate OC. Join our live recordings every Tuesday morning at accelerateoc.com or listen, like, and share anytime from your favorite podcast spot. Let's accelerate OC together.